party. Thank you guys for coming. Um, what we want to do today is introduce ourselves, talk a little bit about who we are and what we do as a unified mental health team. And then we can certainly have time for questions and discussions since there's only a couple of you. So why do we need a unified mental health team? Um, these are just some recent stats. Um, mental health conditions affect one in six youth age 6 to 17 and 50% of all lifetime cases of mental illness begin by age 14. So this is a critical time for us to intervene and prevent um, and assist kids with mental health issues. Part of our team are professional school counselors and all of us have a master's degree in school counseling. We get uh, go through the licensure process every five to ten years. We're trained in suicide prevention, crisis management, recognizing signs of child abuse neglect, suicide screening, threat assessment, multi-tier system support, <laughs> restorative practices, and much more. But that's some of the um, main things that we do a lot. And between the four of us, we have over 50 years of school counseling experience. We all do small groups for lots of different reasons. Um, we survey the kids and we survey the parents every year just to find out what the needs are in the school community. So you can see there's a variety of things that we do in small group. <clears throat> we do classroom lessons on bullying, cyberbullying prevention, healthy relationships. We do career exploration, um, college exploration, post high school. And if there's another need that arises that um, we could do a lesson on, then we would do that too throughout the year. We also work with kids individually. This is probably how we spend the bulk of our time. Kids coming in to see us or parents asking us to see a child or teachers sending a child to us um, on an individual basis. We do suicide screenings, unfortunately, pretty frequently. We serve on the threat assessment teams, and we collaborate with outside agencies. My name is Ashley Harper, and I am the lead counselor here, and I work with all the students who have IEPs, or special education services. It's my 21st year as Loudoun County Middle School counselor, and for 17 of those years, I've been the lead counselor, and this is my fourth middle school, and I just realized this is the longest I've ever stayed at a school, so. <laughs> and I don't have plans to go anywhere. Um, I'm also on the behavioral intervention team and MAMP trained, and that's the system um, when we, the, ba the, B the BIT team for short, we get called to situations where a child might be getting physical or might be um, eloping from the building, and so we're tra especially trained to deal with those situations on that team. Next is Rowan. Hello, I'm Rowan Tringali. I'm the eighth grade counselor. It is my second year at Harvard Park. Um, I first got my bachelor's of science and family science, which is broad term of social work at University of Maryland at College Park and then I went to George Mason I got my school counseling degree and then I spent three years at a residential facility working with um, adolescents who struggle with mental health. Um, I really enjoy reading, watching TV and playing with my dog and see on the screen. He's basically the Harper Park mascot who takes me to work every day. <laughs> and he's a lot bigger now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh that's me. I was like, I don't recognize my name for some reason. I just got a new last name, guys, okay? So my last name used to be Blevin, so if you see that on the website, just replace that. Okay, you're right. Um, I got my Bachelor of Arts in Psychology from Salisbury University. Uh, I got my, then I went directly into getting my Master's of Education in School Counseling from Crossford State University. And since then, I had completed a uh, post-master's graduate certificate in clinical mental health counseling. Um, I passed the NCMHCE and I now have my um, NCC credentials nationally certified counselor and I am pursuing a uh, private licensure for the state uh, which, which is the licensed professional counselor resident. Um, I worked in one other school besides Harper Park in the middle of nowhere West Virginia on top of a mountain. It was very unique of an experience. Um, I am much more a city person in this area than I was a mountain lady over there. So I have been staying with LCPS for five years at this point and been at HPMS ever since. Um, I'm also the military connected counselor. Hi everybody. Uh, thank you guys um, for being here. Uh, by the way, I really appreciate you guys coming out. Um, also, Miss IB, our principal, is here. Thank you for uh, being here to support us as well. I'm sure you guys have seen uh, her and seen the emails um, that every Sunday come out. So. Um, thank you guys again. Um, I'm the sixth grade counselor. I am going to be following the students up to seventh and eighth grade, as you guys probably all know here. If you don't, um, each of the grade level counselors will follow the students up uh, until they are done with eighth grade. Um, so I'm the sixth grade counselor. Um, I uh, had, had a degree in teaching uh, when I started, and I taught high school, and then was a counselor in high school, and then but now I've been here for uh, in middle school for five years. So it's my fifth year at Harper Park, um, 
and uh, I uh, um, do um, enjoy uh, being in middle school. Definitely a change from high school, but um, have uh, been here for yeah a little while now, and I uh, really enjoy it. And, yeah, that's it. Hi, I'm Beth Weatherford. I'm the school psychologist here. Um, I'm my bachelor's in science and psychology from Virginia Tech. My master's from Radford University. I have 24 years, which does not even seem possible experience in the schools. Um, I've done all grade levels. I've done anywhere from preschool to high school. I spent a long time at a high school, actually, with Mr. Bissick. And then I, when we, as a county, went over to the Unified Mental Health Teams, I was lucky enough to be here at Harper Park. Um, so this is now my one and only school. So I don't know if you know, but every middle school and high school only has one psychologist and one social worker. We don't um, share school. So I'm really lucky for that. Um, <clears throat> I'm a short practice trainer for conferences and language and circles, which is just building community. Um, school psychologists, we, our primary job when I first started was doing the comprehensive psychological evaluations. But in the middle school, high school, we really have shifted to that individual group counseling, the mental health. Um, functional behavioral assessments, screenings, threat assessments. Um, I work very closely with staff regarding behavioral emotional learning needs. I'm also a member of the BIT team, Child Study IEPs, um, MTSS, and I work very closely with our counselors and our social worker, and you'll get to see our room here in a minute where, where I am, but we are a very cohesive team. So that's, we, our jobs kind of all intertwine, but we all have our little specialties, but we work really well together as a group. Hey, hi everybody. I'm Ashley Olson. I'm our school social worker. Um, so I have my BSW, bachelor's in social work, and my master's in social work. Licensed, of course, through Virginia. I'm a certified child and adolescent trauma professional. I'm also, now realizing I didn't put it on there, I'm also working towards my private uh, professional license, LCSW. This is my fifth year at Harper Park. No plans to leave, as long as everybody else is not planning to leave, because we are a really great team and work well together. Um, and you can just go to the next one. Okay, so what do we do? Again, a lot of the same stuff that everybody else has mentioned. Our main purpose is to be the link between school, family, and community. So our job is kind of to see if there are any um, deficits either at home or at school and where we can help the parents um, or whoever's at home fill that gap. So if a kid needs um, counseling outside of school, um, if the family needs resources that they're having a hard time finding, we help them get those things. So we just kind of help fill in the gaps between all those three areas. Um, I do a lot of individual and group counseling along with our, with our other counselors, um, case management, management services for our homebound kids, home-based, um, McKinney Bento and our foster care students. And along with Beth and um, Harper, we do RP circles and conferences here as well. And all that. <laughs> <laughs> Threat assessment, suicide screenings. Um, the PBIS external coach this year, um, Beth will also, is also the, not officially, but basically the other external coach for when I come in and out on maternity leave, <laughs> which is <laughs> happening again this year. So she's gonna be taking over for me with that as well. Um, and all of us, I think all the counselors yes. are, um, along with us, are, do Sources of Strength, which is our suicide prevention program. Um, so we're the adult advisors for that, and we have, it, that's just for 7th and 8th graders to do. I'm glad you went into detail because I feel like there's a lot of misconception around the term social worker, especially as it applies to your position in the school. Yeah, we're nice. Yes. <laughs> a lot of people thing. hear social worker and they don't like it, but I promise I'm nice. Um, okay, and we wanted to show you the Oasis, so you might have heard that word before. You could be like, there's the Oasis at Harper Park. So that's our office, Miss um, Harper, myself, and Miss Weatherford. That's our room. It was a computer lab, and then when all the kids got their own Chromebooks, it was an empty room because we didn't need that many computer labs anymore. And so um, six years ago, or maybe five years ago, five. yeah. Um, these two lovely ladies advocated for it to become a mental health space in our building and our admin was incredibly supportive and said absolutely so that's where our office is each of us have a little space where we do our individual and group counseling if we need to um, but it's a room for any student to come if they need to take a mental health break just a brain break um, if they need to talk to one of us process so it's got a lot of purposes 
a lot of kids think it's the place to go if they're trying to skip class, but don't worry, we are on top of that. Don't let that happen. So we have a coloring station. We have like fun chairs that they can sit in. We always have fun music on, like relaxing, fidget toys, books, kinetic sand, which they love, puzzles, which they love, and also Officer Andrade <laughs> loves the puzzle. She, she does. Is, helps make our puzzles get done. Uh, magnets that they like to play with. We have an affirmation station where they can like choose a positive statement that speaks to them. And then this is new that we've tried to do it in the past, but this year we're really trying to be on top of our data collection. So every student checks in when they come in the room to say whether they're there for a brain break or to talk or um, sometimes we have kids eat lunch in there. So we're trying to really track that this year, how many kids are coming in every day and then why they're coming in. So yeah, lots of spaces to talk individually. We each have a little corner. And then of course, if it's like, um, if a student is in crisis or if they're really overwhelmed or something, like um, we'll either close or we'll go to one of the other counselor's rooms. Um, I know like in my corner, I have a little, what do we call it? Divider, divider. A little partition, yeah, divider that I'll put up sometimes and the kid will just sit there if they don't want anyone to see them. But for the most part, they don't really care. <laughs> I'll, we'll ask sometimes, like, hey, do you want to go to another room? They're like, no, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> so it's, it's great, and that's where we all are, and it's really nice to have that space in kids, especially like in sixth grade. They're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool that this school has a space like this, and other students at other schools, because this is very rare in the county to have it. I think we might be the only one, or maybe there's a few other schools that have a space like this. And We're the trend center. We were the first. <laughs> when other um, counselors or social workers come, they're like, oh, I wish my school had a space like this. So it's definitely used a lot. I wish my house had a space like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, before I even introduce myself, I will piggyback on the Oasis because I am here and also at Heritage High School. And that's all I heard about a back to school night from all the parents transferring from Parkour Park and their kids were coming in as freshmen. Do you have an Oasis? Mm -hmm. There was not an oasis at Heritage. I have advocated for one, but there was not an oasis right now at Heritage High School, so take advantage of it while you can, because it is, it is great. Um, so I am Sherry Hoover, I have multiple names. It says Helen Hoover, that's my legal name. I'm trying to get them to change it. But I am the student assistant specialist at both Harper Park and Heritage. Um, they've kind of changed it over the years. I didn't do my whole background, but I have my um, undergrad is in psychology from Marymount. Um, I have a master's in counseling psychology from Marymount and a friend, it's my second master's in forensic psychology from Marymount. I have been a licensed professional counselor in the community for over 15 years and in previous to that I was a marriage and family therapist in California. Um, I worked for Loudoun County Mental Health for over two decades in every arena included with students, assistant specialists used to come from there over here just to evaluations and then go back over there. The need for, for it was so great, they actually created the positions over here at the school. So I have now jumped ship and come over here because what I've seen, especially during COVID, is um, the need for early and earlier intervention and prevention with kids. And so what I do a little bit of is I kind of meet with students or parents request it or they want it. And I provide substance use and also mental health services. Um, there are some things that we're not sure it's the chicken or the egg, which one came first. So sometimes if they see one of their counselors or a social worker and they're seeing maybe there might be something else going on, they might refer them to me to check out and see if there's any substance use going on or possible substance use. Um, and then sometimes it's a it's not a substance use thing that can transfer them back. So we all work very collaboratively together. Something unique about this position too is it used to just kind of be at the high schools. What they've tried to do over the years is, is have a, what we call a SAS in each school. So I'm going to be transitioning with the kids from middle school to high school so they'll already know me. Um, eventually we're gonna get into elementary schools, start from that early on and move all the way up. Our SASs went from three to 19 and it's growing and it's still not enough right now. Um, one of the things that I think kind of concerns people sometimes is you hear substance use and, and hearing, talking to kids about it they all have heard it somewhere, so it's also, it's good to clear up any misconceptions around it. Um, average age to try now is eight. Now, average age to use regularly is 13. Um, and this is a very unique area in the fact that 
Um, kids have more accessibility now to other things besides alcohol since things have been, are getting legalized and also this is a very high target area for things like fentanyl. And they are specifically targeted towards kids. And so it's not to scare, it's just to educate. And so we do parent presentations all the time. I send our newsletter out so that they can go into the um, Harper Park newsletter so you guys can see that. That is my email if you guys ever want me just to meet with the student. And again, I don't, I don't sit there and just jump into what is substance use. They kind of tell me a little bit what they already know, which is really helpful for me to kind of see where their knowledge base is. And just to kind of give them some education around them. The more you talk about substance use, the, the less likely it, it is for them to try in the earlier years, you can push it off to later years. Every year you push off a student using substances, they have a greater success of not becoming addicted later in life and being more successful in college because these are their formative years with their brain. And then thank you whoever added this. <laughs> this is kind of the different tiers that I'm a part of. So. I also do substance abuse prevention presentations for sixth and eighth grade and 10th grade in high school. They being presentations, which is huge in this area. Um, I'm part of the restorative practice team and I'm part of the crisis team. Um, my tier two is I do COA groups if needed. So COA is children of alcoholics or addicts. So if we see a need, kids that might have parents at home who are using, it's a safe space for them to go and talk in a group confidentiality. Um, each school's particular, if they have it, we see if the need is there. There's also a lot of outside community resources I try to link parents to. I also do essay assessments and evaluations. I'm a Narcan trainer, which Fairfax County Schools is now carrying Narcan. Loudoun County is probably heading that way. I'd be like one of those people that probably would carry it and have it on me. Sounds scary. Just saying, I have, a, I have had to administer it. It is scary. Do you guys know what Narcan is? That's also everybody know that. Can you explain what Narcan is? So Narcan is kind of like an EpiPen for a child having an allergic reaction. It's a shot of adrenaline if somebody is having an opiate overdose. Mm -hmm. And so what it does, it brings them back. It's a shot of adrenaline to the heart, brings them back. It gives about 15 minutes for the EMTs to arrive. So really, it's just a band aid until the EMTs come. So that's one of the reasons of carrying it. It's better to be safe than sorry. It's better to be proactive than reactive to things. Um, and it's administered a different way, just because I just see other question people have a lot. The old way is kind of an injection. Now they're doing more nasal. So. And tier three, I in the high school I do more of this. Um, if there is a violation, which could be vaping, or it could be coming to school under the influence, or it could be coming to school under the influence of marijuana, alcohol, whatever. Sometimes I'm not even sure what they're under the influence of. Um, I meet with them and I do something called an insight program. So it is a intensive education, but also I do a assessment. The assessment is called Substance Abuse Subtle Screening Inventory. It is evidence-based practice. It is 85% effective in diagnosing early or um, low or high probability of substance use. So like if you go to a therapist, they're only 62% in a clinical assessment. This assessment tool is 85% effective and it's been around for over 20 years. And so I kind of go from there and then I give the parents any additional resources they need, need from that point on. I'm Officer Andrade, I'm the SRO, I like Ms. Olson, I'm not scary. Uh, my main goal here at Harper Park is, or anywhere really, whatever school I'd be at, is to help. Um, a lot of people have the wrong misconception that officers within a school are only there to get kids in trouble, um, and that is not correct. Um, so our main goal is to make sure that everybody is safe, while the kids, the staff at the school is safe. Uh, but aside from that, um, it's building relationships with the students to create that rapport so that they have another adult that they can talk to if they want to, um, another adult that is an example for them, a good example for them, um, somebody that they can trust and go to if they need to. Um, I always tell students they're welcome in my office, my door is always open. Um, I spend a lot of time in the Oasis working on puzzles and sometimes they'll just I ask them if they want to help me finish the puzzle because I can't do it myself, and then they just start talking, and you know it's a good place for them to just 
vent if they have to, um, build a relationship with like a positive influence for them. Um, sometimes I we have other resources that we can offer families if students come and ask for help. Um, there's a lot of things that we can help them with. Um, I have been in law enforcement for three years. Prior to that, I was, um, I've been with LPD for four years, an officer for three. Um, I'm in the crisis intervention team, so I was trained. Um, it's a, something that a lot of police departments are moving towards where we go to classes or training, like a 40 hour training to learn how to talk to people when they are in a crisis. Um, whatever that crisis may be. Um, so that also helps when, um, whenever a student that feels comfortable with me might be in a crisis and they see me, they're not scared to see me and they are able to kind of get out of that crisis mode. It's just another person that they can feel safe with. Um, I conduct patrols throughout the school, make sure everything, all the doors are closed, um, everything is safe for everyone in the building. Um, I enjoy interacting with the students um, so that they're comfortable with me and they are not scared to see at least one police officer they know, right? Like, I know the uniform can be intimidating, but um, if they at least have one person that they know in uniform, that is nice and not intimidating, it'll help them in the future. Um, I work closely with admin and uh, the unified mental health team. Um, and support the students in whatever way I can, not necessarily as like a police officer, but also just like another adult that they can talk to, like I said. Um, and also not because um, if I'm involved, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm involved as a police officer. There's a, a very specific kind of like contract, we can say, between the schools and the police department, which says, what certain things I need to involve myself as a police officer, and then anything outside of those roles, um, it's kind of just me being uh, supportive to admin and the unified mental health team. So just because I'm involved doesn't mean that the student is in trouble in any way, shape, or form. So. Thanks, Maladi. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm really the low person on the totem pole here. These guys do the work, but we are, as, as assistant principals and principals, we are a support to the Unified Mental Health Team. Uh, we do attend the meetings that we discuss, you know, things that we need in our building to support students. Honestly, they're the pillar of the school. They're who hold the school up. Um, I call them like the caring committee, right? Because not only do they take care of our students, but they take care of our staff too. You all know that that, that baseline there, if students are not emotionally ready for school and staff are not emotionally ready for school then the other part is never will never meet the learning part of it or the teaching part of it uh, so our unified mental health team here does a great job with making sure that emotionally our students are prepared for the day um, and our staff are, are, are supported as well um, oftentimes our staff will even come and, and connect just to reach out to say, hey, you know, I got some things going on, or you know, share some concerns they have about a student to help us support those students who are in need. Um, but yeah, we're just again just another resource for everyone um, on the Unified Mental Health team and the staff as well. Um, and we're just there to to make sure that supports are given. Good morning. Good morning. Um, um, and to make sure that we are meeting the students and staff needs. So we do a lot of talking, a lot of conversations. Um, about what's the need in our building in regards to where we are uh, with uh, where students are emotionally um, and where staff are emotionally. That's pretty much it for us. Thank you. So that's the team. Um, we can all be uh, reached by email. It's firstname.lastname at lcps.org or you can call. Um, we are happy to help with whatever your student or you um, need. So you just have to tell us, give us the word, and we'll we'll get right on it. Um, we also, if you are on Twitter or Instagram, we're on there. You can follow us. And that is all. Yeah. Any questions? Pretty clear. Yeah. Thank you.
I have a question about yeah. the Oasis. Yeah. Are they, when are they allowed to go? Like if they're not having an issue, is it resource time? It's, that that's typically when a child will come just because they're, they don't have work to do. But they, if they need a break, like just a brain break, not necessarily mental health support, and they're in science, let's say, they just ask the teacher. And the teacher might say, can you wait for 10 minutes and then I'll let you go. Um, so they do come from classes, but resources is typical when they would be there. Is there ever a time that they're not allowed to leave resource? The reason I'm asking, my daughter could just be dramatic, but she's like, Mom, I'm not allowed to do anything during recess. I can't go to the library. I can't go to the Oasis. I was like, ah, I don't know if that. So um, our deans met with our resource teachers a couple weeks ago um, and discussed that for the first quarter, they wanted to try to keep the kids in resource, okay. establish a routine, um, and make sure the kids are staying up on, on their work. So that is, and that's new. Um, we, that hasn't been done before. But like on Friday, I had a resource teacher call me. A kid did need to come out. Not They weren't in crisis, but they did want to come to talk. And so they asked me, and I said, sure, send them down. So they can, and if they're done with their work, um, I guess starting second quarter, they might be allowed to take breaks starting their course. It kind of gets overwhelming sometimes because we have so many resources going on and one resource teacher doesn't know that another one has sent four kids from their resource so we're trying to curb that too because we don't have a huge space good question though i would also share often um, there will be some times too where um, students have um, maybe said some things that have not been too kind to each other um and, and that's happened before um oftentimes uh, you'll see maybe an email, whether it be like, 